Okay, so other reasons that maybe you'd be coming to the webinar today is um, we're hoping that students are still going out for a summer of independent travel or maybe even taking a gap year in their studies. Or maybe as an individual, you just prefer to stay close at home. But this seminar webinar will also help you expand your knowledge of other cultures. And maybe you just enjoy reading about someone else's adventures. So the library can help you prepare for all of these things. Today, we're going to tell you about our language learning resources, our documentaries and films, both on DVD and streaming, uh, some world literature, graphic novels, and travel guides. And as an, a an ASU student, staff, or faculty, we want you to know that in addition to the library services that are offered at the libraries of our international partner schools, at which you may be studying, you also have access to the ASU library's electronic resources and research help via web conferencing while abroad. So to begin with, I'm going to talk a little bit about world literature and graphic novels available here at ASU Libraries. So I believe that reading literature from another country, it really provides insight into these other cultures and their perspectives. And the library has a large collection of classical and contemporary literature from around the world. And here's some of our samples of the literature that we collect. These are located on the third floor and they're shelved within the PF through PT classification range. The library collects all major literature prize winning novels and authors, including the Man Booker, we got the Nobel, and we got Pulitzer Prize winners up there. Plus, we also collect many of the individual countries' literary awards. So here in this picture, you see that we have uh, African Psycho, we have Children Alley, Ch Children Alley, written by the famous author Nagib Mahfouz, we have some from Japan, and we have certain novel here from France. We also, at the library, collect graphic novels from a variety of countries and in a variety of languages, including French, German, Spanish, and Japanese. Uh, the international graphic novels can be instructional for learning about different countries. So if you see from the sample, we have a graphic novel that talks about the Egyptian Revolution or the Arabic Spring. We have a book, How to Understand Israel in 60 Days or Less. We also have Aya and Persepolis, and these are written by um, graphic novel authors, and they tell the lives of young women. Aya from Mali and Persepolis, which you're probably familiar with, is a story of a young woman growing up in Iran. Graphic novels can also help individuals learn an additional language by supplying images that support reading comprehension, along with simple sentences. Um, and the visual or the contextual clues that are in the pictures also allow readers to comprehend uh, some of the story. And you can see here, here's a page from the graphic novel Aya that we have in French. Another method of both increasing your cultural competencies and language skills are these fabulous readers that we call parallel text readers. These books contain the original language on the right page of a book while the left page of the book is in English. So even if you don't know the second language, we have an English translation, but if you are by chance studying another language, you have them English on one side, and in this case, Arabic on the other. I wanna show you right now, there's a helpful resource that we have in the library. All these things I just talked to you about, after the webinar, you're gonna go home and you're gonna be like, you know, I kind of remember she talked about international graphic novels and she also talked about literature, but I'm not really sure where to find it. So we have created these things known as library guides. And I'm going to show you a library guide that once you leave this program, if you can find this library guide, you'll be able to find most resources that we're talking about today. It's right in the middle of the screen for the library homepage. And you come here to browse library guide and you click on that. And you see different ways of finding library guides. Well, this library guide I'm going to tell you about today is entitled Languages, Learning and Resources. So you know the subject of the guide is languages. If you scroll down this list and just go to where it says the subject is languages and linguistics and click on that, it's right here in the middle. It's the middle library guide selection. And again, it's titled Languages, Learning and Resources. If you click on that, up here you can see there are different tabs for different topics related to language learning. 
Molly's going to talk about our language learning resources later in our webinar, but right now I'm going to show you some information on the tab marked Film, Music, Children's Parallel Text, and Graphic Novels. So as we talked about before, here's a more description about our graphic novels, and we actually have selected titles here. So if you're interested in, uh, let's see, uh, Mouse in German, if you click on this hot link, it actually takes you to our catalog. Uh, we're actually logged in here, so it's not how it usually looks. Let me go back. Uh, there you go. It'll look like this, and you can see that it's not checked out, so it's available upstairs or on the second floor under the call number D810.J4. So remember the library guide. Going back, we also have here a reminder of you where the literature call numbers or the world literature are upstairs. So say you wanted to just go browse what we have in French literature. That would be actually literature that's written in French plus English translation. You know that you just need to go up to the third floor, find the PQs, and you can browse the shelves. Just walk the shelves until you find the French literature. Or you can ask a librarian and they'll set you in the right direction. We also have a selected listing here of our parallel text readers. These are difficult to find without this list, so this is a place to look for the parallel text readers. Okay. Um, and while I enjoy reading international literature and graphic novels in print while at home, I don't enjoy traveling with heavy books. So if you've ever traveled with two to three books in your luggage, you know how heavy they can be. Right now, let's see. Um, I also know how it feels to finish my current novel and need something to find, uh, need to find something else to read while I'm traveling. This can be even more problematic if I'm traveling in a non-English speaking country or in a country with a weak publishing industry or not many bookstores. So this is where eBooks can prove a wonderful alternative to print books while you're traveling. The library has this great resource and it's called Overdrive. And this allows campus faculty, staff, and students to download eBooks and audiobooks to their personal devices. So you can literally be anywhere in the world with an internet connection and be able to download personal reading materials with no cost to you. Our Overdrive collection has over 800 eBooks and audiobooks to choose from enabling a reader to have a constantly changing library basically in their back pocket. I love to download them to my iPhone. Uh, to locate Overdrive, you go to the library's homepage and click here on all article, article databases. This is a link and it takes you here to this page. And here in the upper left hand corner, we have an alphabet where you can pick the databases by the first letter of the name of the database. Since we know that we're looking for overdrive, we're going to click O here. And here is the selection for overdrive. And looking at this briefly, you can see once the page opens, we have the option of fiction, both an ebook fiction and audiobook fiction, uh, excuse me, audiobook fiction. And you also have ebook nonfiction as well as audiobook nonfiction. Um, and Molly is going to be talking much more depth about these resources uh, and overdrive in general later in this session. Not so much the language learning resources, or, I'm sorry, not so much the fiction and the nonfiction, but she's going to be talking more about language learning resources and travel guides in overdrive. And then the last things I'm going to talk about, back to my PowerPoint. is something that I absolutely love. Um, the library has a large assortment of travel guides. A lot of these are right now in our browsing section on our main floor over by the fireplace. Uh, those are the print travel guides, and here's just a random selection of the travel guides that we have. We also have quite a bit of book, few ebook uh, travel guides available via OverDrive. Uh, travel guides, I believe that these help you find the best places to stay and eat. They give tips on nightlife, and they also supply information about cultural norms around the world. Um, as you can see, publishers here include Voters, Moon, uh, Frommers, and we got something else here. 
I believe that might be a, a rough guide there at the bottom. Um, you may not want to actually walk around with the print copies, but again, you can download ebook equivalents through Overdrive. And the last thing I'm going to talk to you about is the travel literature. So if you're a seasoned traveler and you've gone all the way around the world, had many experiences, or perhaps you're an armchair traveler, like a lot of my friends, and they experience cultures through the eyes and words of an author, uh, here at the ASU Libraries, we have a large collection of travel literature. I love to read it and get inspired by reading books of travel authors such as Paul Theroux, V.S. Nepal, um, Jan Morris, and one of my favorite travel authors, Lois Price, lo who wrote lo uh, Lois on the Loose, her personal tale of driving a 250cc motorcycle from Alaska down to the southern tip of South America. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Molly. Hi, thank you, Beth. So just after Beth's part, I am already ready to travel. I don't know about you guys. Is everyone still doing okay in the chat box? Perfect. I am also accepting donations for travel, if that's something that we're doing. I would love to go to Munich. So I'm going to get started talking about really the library resources that maybe you've used now, but you continue to have access to while you're abroad. I know that you're all probably actively using all of the wonderful resources that are available via the library. And while you're traveling to St. Lucia, you might think, hey, I'm still working on some research. I have scholarly uh, research that I would like to stay engaged with, well, you can still have those resources at your fingertips. So I'd like to talk about a few of those. Uh, to start with, you continue to have access to our over 300 databases. This will all be pending having some type of internet connection, of course, but I just want you to, to let you know that wherever you are, you continue to have access. So if you're doing some type of research on new perspectives on global warming, you could look at our biology subject, for example, and continue your research. And if you're not familiar by clicking on databases, you'll see that these are organized by name, by type, and by subject. So if you're a new student, for example, and you want to look at some of our primary sources, you can do that, or even our general databases. If you need some additional assistance with your research, and this is more of a resource for students, if you're not familiar, we have what we call wrap, ses wrap sessions, part of the research advisory program. Under how do I, you can schedule a wrap session. You're probably familiar, familiar with this from doing them in person, but you actually have the option of doing them online as well. So if we click on wrap session, you'll see some additional information about the wrap program, the type of information that you can be helped with, how to set one up, if I click on request a wrap session, that's actually how you'll set up the session. A lot of basic information that will ask you for a description of your assignment, when your assignment is due. But the most important thing you want to remember is that you're going to be setting it up either telephone or web conferencing. I do want to emphasize, don't feel overwhelmed with this. If you've never done any type of on-learn research consultation before, we have a lot of really wonderful librarians here that will be happy to make sure that you have all of the resources that you need. If you need a special software, they can help you with that. In fact, Kelly McAllister is one of our wonderful distance, libra distance education librarians that could assist you. If I navigate back to our home page, I do want to let you know that as an instructor, you also, or faculty member, you also have an option for long distance assistance. So over faculty category on the home page, you can click on request a librarian instruction session. So perhaps you've invited a librarian to your classroom already and they've given an instruction on literature reviews or annotated bibliographies or a specific subject area. You can also do that online. So similarly, you will click request a librarian instruction session. And from here, you'll see request an instruction session. And very similar to the wrap session, we'll ask for some basic information. And then once again, you'll see your option for online. 
I want to emphasize these are so easy to do. I know it can be overwhelming if you're not familiar with the technology. It might be similar to what we're doing right now where we set up a go-to meeting and we're virtually in your classroom, but it's really a great experience, especially for international travel and learning. So if I navigate back to the home page, if you are a more self-guided learner, if you don't want a wrap session or a librarian in your classroom, we do have some options for you also. Beth touched on the research guides earlier, and I do want to emphasize those once again. You'll see them listed right here under library guides. And she showed you the fabulous uh, learning resources guide. I do want to point out that we have a lot of resources that you can explore wherever you are. So if you find yourself in India and you need some citation assistance, we have a research guide for you. So you're welcome to explore on your own all about annotated bibliographies, different citation standards, etc. And you'll see that these are organized in a lot of different ways, course guides by subject, by discipline, and of course by research tool. And in fact, if you're teaching a class overseas and you'd like us to build you a library guide, we can do that as well. One more option for you self-guided learners. We also have a number of fabulous short tutorial videos. These are also listed under how do I view how-to videos. And I do wanna point out that sometime in the near future, we're actually going to be adding this to this collection, a short three to five minute video on all of these fabulous resources. So from this screen, you'll see a number of videos and you can also click on different categories. So I'll stick with my citation theme. If you wanted to look at what information we have on citations, you can check these out. The great thing about these videos is they usually are around three to five minutes long, so you don't have to spend a half hour watching a video. So next up, we're going to talk about some of the online language resources that we have. There's three that I'm going to cover today, Overdrive, Mango Languages, and Pronunciator. So let's get started looking at Overdrive. So as Beth showed you earlier, we're going to click on All Article Databases, and I'm gonna go O for Overdrive, and click on Overdrive. So as Beth mentioned, we have a number of fiction and nonfiction ebooks and audiobooks available, but you'll see under this ebooks nonfiction category, we also have a travel and foreign language study section. So if you wanted to click on travel, you could peruse some of the travel books that are available. If I go back, and if you're looking to learn a language, you can look at foreign language study. And you'll see by scrolling over the title, you'll have the option of sampling and borrowing the book. I'm gonna be very honest with you right now. I use eBooks, I use audiobooks, and sometimes they can still stump me. They can be a little overwhelming sometimes to download. That's just the nature of eBooks. But once again, I don't want you to feel overwhelmed. If you do wanna check out one of these fabulous books and you run into any type of trouble, we actually have some wonderful, a specific wonderful library guide that you can use. So I'm actually going to navigate back and show you that. So once again, clicking on library guides, this one is ebook collection. And this has really everything that you need to know about eBooks and audiobooks, and you'll see this tab for Overdrive. So if you'd like to check out that book on the German language, you'll see all of this information, checkout limit, any type of technology that's required, if there's an app that you need to download for your phone, Kindle, et cetera, you should find that here. And there's also contact information. So if you're still running into trouble, you can contact John Boyd or really any other librarian and they'll try to assist you. All right, that's Overdrive. Next, we're going to look at Mango. I like to check in with the group sometimes, so everyone doing okay, getting ideas for travel? <laughs> I see Kelly gave me good luck as a travel donation, or one of the Kellys. Okay, good. So next, we're going to look at Mango. I'm going to navigate back to all articles and databases and click on M for Mango. 
And we actually taught a mango specific workshop several months ago. So you're welcome to view that if you'd like some more in depth information on mango. But a little bit about mango, you have access to over 60 languages or I'm sorry, over 80 languages, also English learning and a number of videos that you can use for your language learning as well. If you would just like to use guest access, you don't need to create an account and you'll still have the same access. But if you would like to log in, it keeps a record of your progress. So I'm going to log in to show you around a little bit. So I'm going to navigate back to what I consider the home page, even though it doesn't say home, which just gives us a list of all the languages. So from here, it says 71 languages are listed here, but uh, I think if you count English and the special courses, it becomes over 80. So we see the top languages listed here. Uh, if we navigate over to all languages, you'll see the many, many languages that you have at your disposal. Uh, Japanese, Russian, Yiddish, there's even pirate on here if you'd like to learn pirate. If learning English is something that you're interested in, that's an option as well. And there are specialty courses also. So for example, a specialty course would be if you were traveling to Germany for Oktoberfest, you might take a course in that. And it's going to give you very specific language. Maybe, hello, how do I order a beer? Might be something that they let you know how to say. <laughs> yes, Mark can already speak pirate. That's wonderful. Uh, so there's also movies. Movies are one of my favorite features of Mango, and I think that it's something that a lot of people aren't aware of. If I were looking at Viva Cuba, you'll see this one is Spanish. It's very interactive. You can actually watch the movie just watching it, or you can go in engage mode, and it's going to give you interactive activities and quizzes. And you can also watch the movie with both Spanish and English subtitles. So it's a phenomenal resource for learning conversational language before your trip. And once again, you can use this before your travels, and you even have access to this while you're abroad. So if you find yourself struggling with a language and you want to check back in, you can always access Mango. So we will next look at Pronunciator. So I'll navigate back and I'll click on P. <laughs> I like all of the language dialogue that's going on in the, on the back or in the box. Uh, so let's look at Pronunciator. This one is similar to Mango. Uh, just really, if you're playing around with both of them, you'll find that whichever one you have a preference for. Once again, over 80 languages. And you can use an account or you can just log in with an email. It's going to check and make sure that all of our technology is correct. And then we should be good to go. Bon voyage. So if you happen to speak a different language, you can change your language, but I'll keep it at English. And what do we want to learn today? What do we want to look at? If anyone types anything in, I'll do that. Or we'll just go with German. That's where I would like to go. So there are a lot of different options depending on the type of travel that you're doing. If you have children, you'll see there's actually a young learners course. So maybe you're doing some family travel. Uh, there's also beginner and advanced courses. There's also an option for live conversation, which can be a great tool for practicing language. You do have to set these up with the schedule that's available within Pronunciator, but it's another wonderful resource. So that's it with the language resources. And really, I want to emphasize everything that we're showing you is such a tip of the iceberg. There's so much more for you to explore. I'm going to navigate, though, to the home page. And the next and final thing that I'm going to talk about are the streaming videos and the DVDs that are available. So it can be wonderful to learn languages by reading and listening, but I also enjoy learning about cultures by watching a film, and also languages by watching a movie or film with captions. So we have a couple of different options. The first thing I'd like to show you are DVDs that you can check out. Now these are DVDs, they're not streaming. Just to be clear, there are two separate things that I'm showing you. The DVDs, though, are very easy to search. If you click on collections up here at the top, and then movie collection, you'll see that it's already separated out for you. 
If you would like, you can search by title, author, or keyword. But you'll see down here, you can also just click on any of these languages and you'll automatically be navigated to that language. So let's look at Chinese. And here you are, you see DVD, you'll see the call number, all the information that you need. If you wanted to click on the link, of course, you'd get additional information. And both of these are not, not checked out. And you'll see if you go on a little bit further, there's some more collection by region. We also have streaming DVD or streaming films available. So these are not physical copies. You can access these from your home computer or device. You can even access them from overseas. I'll navigate once again back to our home page to show you how to get there. The easiest way that I find to do this search is to simply in the app search box, go to the middle, books and media, and then advanced search so I can search by streaming. So if you're not familiar with this box, which I hope that you are, this is how you search our collection. And you can put in keywords here, but you'll also see there's a material type here. So if you don't change your material type, you're going to search everything. But to make things easier for yourself and search what we're looking for, you can change it to streaming video. And I'm just gonna put in a couple keywords. You can put in India and travel, and you should get a little selection. These are going to be streaming videos from a number of different collections. You might find PBS, DocuSeek is another phenomenal documentary collection that we have. And you'll see the whole list, once again, with the streaming video icon. So a few of the titles, Pakistan Unveiled, The Other Side of the Taj Mahal. I can see how these would be a great way to learn about the culture of an area that I'm going to visit. So just to show you how to access these, most of them it's pretty easy. You simply click on the link, click to view via subscription at ASU, and voila, we have it. You just click play. This one's approximately 26 minutes long, and you'll see that 494 other wonderful people found this documentary useful. And that's how you can, of course, search any of the streaming videos. So that is really the final thing that I have to show you. And I know that Beth has finished up her information as well.